Hi, I'm Bonnie. And I'm Morgan. And we are here to teach you about the thermodynamics behind making sherbet with dry ice. Solid carbon dioxide, commonly known as dry ice, is extremely cold. Carbon dioxide's freezing point is negative 78.5 degrees Celsius. This was our first attempt using water and dry ice, which was unsuccessful. We attempted to mix the dry ice and the sorbet mix together, but it turned out clumpy. We realized that we needed to add a dairy product to make the consistency more smooth. For our second trial, we substituted milk and pectin in for water, making the consistency of our final result much smoother. Dry ice comes in blocks, so we smashed it on the ground since we needed the dry ice in powder form to make the sherbet. We then put the ice through a colander to separate the ice chunks from the powder that we had just made. Separating the powder from the ice chunks made the sherbet much smoother than in our first trial. Now we're ready to make our mixture. First, add the flavor. For ours, we used a quarter of a cup of tang, but any juice mix with sugar will do. Then we added three cups of milk. We used 2%, but any dairy substitute would work as well. We mixed our mixture and went ahead and added in a little bit of extra sugar to taste. Most recipes recommend using a 3 to 1 ratio of dry ice to your mixture. We went ahead and measured out 2 cups of our mixture, so we put aside 6 cups of our dry ice. We put the mixer on a low setting and started adding dry ice in small increments. We chose to do this with a tablespoon. This way we can monitor the consistency of our mixture better than in our first attempt. Now let's talk about the thermodynamics behind the sherbet we made. We can assume by using the first law of thermodynamics that our two mixtures with different temperatures will exchange heat until both are in equilibrium with one another. Since there is no work done by the mixture, we can assume that the only energy exchanged is that of heat, which is what I'm doing on the board here. We also can only use the specific heat at constant pressure because our volume is not constant. Carbon dioxide freezes at negative 78.5 degrees Celsius while the temperature of our mixture was about two degrees Celsius. The reason the milk mixture does not freeze solid when it is mixed with such a cold substance is because not all of the heat energy gained by the dry ice is transferred from the milk mixture. Some of the heat energy is lost in the phase change that happens as the dry ice sublimates into a carbon dioxide gas. We see this in the video every time more dry ice powder is added to the mixture and fog forms in the bowl. We also can note that by combining these two mixtures, we increase the total entropy of the system, which follows the second law of thermodynamics. This also increases the temperature of our mixture, which allows us to eat it right after it's mixed. The reason we are heating up the side of the bowl is to prevent the dry ice from adhering to the metal. Add a tablespoon of pectin to our mixture to give it a more gelatinous consistency. This is what people use in jams and jellies. The second attempt at making the sorbet was much more successful than the first. The consistency was smooth and tasted much better after altering a few ingredients. We hope you found this video informational and educational. Thanks for watching.